G'day and welcome back. Today I've got something very different. I was contacted by a subscriber named Mustafa. He's in Sydney, I'm in Brisbane. He said, I've got this device here. He got it on an auction in America. And he said, what is it? So he sent me a photo of this and he sent me this schematic that he'd drawn out. So I looked at the photo of this, I looked at the schematic, I concluded it's some sort of oscillator, there's a capacitor here, there's sort of coils there, so maybe it's an oscillator. I then passed it on to my friend Stuart at the radio club, he's my mentor, and he said, I don't really know what it is, he could kind of work it out, but he said, maybe it's a Morse code trainer. So we left it at that. My wife and I travelled down to Sydney last week, and I met Mustafa in a motel. No, I didn't. <laughs> My wife and I travelled down to Sydney last week and I met up with Mustafa. We had a coffee and his wife gave me this giant plate of baklava and we enjoyed eating that for the rest of the week. So thanks to Mustafa's wife. I took the mystery board to the Radio Club auction the other day and Stuart was there and he had a look at it in the flesh, went through the circuit. He said, it's not a Morse code trainer. He said, I have no idea what it is. And another gentleman came and had a look and he said, I don't know what that is either. So the consensus was in the end, take it home and try it out, which is what we're going to do. It has a sticker on it saying Spolstra Radio Sales and Service, a phone number and an address. And most of have found some information on Spolstra Radio and Sales on the internet. So I came home and looked it up and I found this. This is the shop front that he had. The address is uh, 748 Franklin Street, Southeast Grand Rapids. And I was able to find the exact address. It's now called Martin Luther King Jr. Southeast. And this is what it is now. It's just a parking lot. I did find a little bit of information on him on an Ancestry website. He was actually born in Grand Rapids in Michigan and uh, started the shop there. I think he was married when he was 19. His wife was 17, I think. That doesn't get us anywhere, of course. Let's have a quick look at what's going on here. Um, it is a battery set, of course. There's B+, plus, B-, minus, uh, A+, minus and a plus there's a speaker outlet there or it's mark speaker i'm not sure exactly what it does there's a valve socket there i have the valve in the corner there in plastic there's a transformer here which apparently is an audio transformer there's a switch a second potentiometer and a tuning capacitor i'm not going to spend too much time on the circuit if you want to have a look just pause it uh, there's b plus going in there's that speaker connector there which is this one here it goes through here under the plate of the O1A uh, valve or tube. The A plus for the filament goes through the filament, of course. It goes through a variable resistor here, or potentiometer actually, and back to A minus. Here's the tuning capacitor. It kind of forms a LC circuit, but not entirely. I'm not terribly good at reading or working out how a circuit actually works. Somebody has to tell me and then I'll understand it but just looking at it, I can't really work it out. There's a grid load resistor there that's variable and it's got a switch in the grid load line. So who knows what's going on there? I certainly don't know why you'd put a switch in there. And the B minus comes through here. This goes to the primary and this is an audio transformer. There's a metal link goes along here to the second coil or the secondary and then onto the bottom of the uh, tuning capacitor there and it joins into the top of the filament. There is a little capacitor across the two coils there. So as I said, how that all connects in and then goes off to the filament and then it's got the grid coming in as well. That to me is an oscillator circuit. I'll point them out on the board here. There's B+, plus. it travels underneath the board, comes up to this connector here, whatever attaches there, comes back here and onto the plate of the valve. This is B-, minus. it goes along here to the primary of the transformer. There's the link across the top that goes to the other side to the secondary. There's a little capacitor was on the bottom. There's the switch in the grid load line and that goes off to this potentiometer here. And that's the one that's changing the voltage in the grid, I assume. This, of course, is the tuning capacitor. This is a potentiometer here in the uh, filament line. So that'll adjust the filament voltage. I'll do some continuity tests before I put power on. I'm good testing it if it's got some faults in it. That's supposed to be 11, which it is. Uh, this is supposed to be 5.3 or something. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, switch there. See where that is. Open loop or overload or whatever you want to call it. There's no continuity, that's for sure. Yeah, that switch is a bit dicky. 
I'll just file a clean spot on the solder there. What have we got now? Yeah, three ohms, four ohms. Yeah, I think that switch is probably okay. There's a uh, variable resistor back here. See what that says? Nothing. All right. Uh, oh, that's tight. I'll give that a spray. That's got it. Let's try it again. 7.8K. Go full one way. One point nine meg, okay. So put about halfway. Let's try this big one here. And already got there four ohms. This is the other direction. And we've got 30 ohms. So that's working alright too. I'll test the valve as well. I've got the meter set up, it needs to be on zero. So I'll plug it in. I have the voltage set to 4, it's actually a 5 volt valve, but I'll just leave it on 4. Uh, the range needs to be set to 51, which I've got it on 51. I'll just let that warm up a bit. I've let that warm up for a minute or so. I'll test it. Oh, look at that's perfect. It's nearly 100%. Alright, so the valve's good. I'm setting up to put some power on it. Before I do, I will replace this capacitor. Uh, it may well be okay, I doubt it. Uh, but I will put a new one in. Just for the test, I will try and refit or restuff this one later on. I'll just wrap the wire around the screw thread there, put the nut back on. I'm ready to try it out. I have my battery eliminator here. I've connected the B plus and B minus into the 45 volt connection. I think the plate voltage on this is 90. The A plus and the A negative are plugged into these outlets here and I've set that at 5 volts. I've connected an audio transformer onto the speaker outlets on the back here and I've got a little speaker attached to the audio transformer. I've got the grid voltage potentiometer turned right down so it shouldn't do anything. I'll put some power on. So I've got 5 volts on there. Oh, that one's not being used at the moment so 5 volts there. There's not much happening. I'll just turn this up. We should be able to see the filament in there. If it's going to work, of course. Oh, it's making a noise. And that's... <laughs> that's pretty much... Can you see the filament in there? There it is. So, yes. So that's just adjusting the filament voltage. So that should be 5 volts when it's on maximum. And it's doing exactly what I thought it would do. And that's just oscillate. Okay. So is this affected? Oh, bit, bit scratchy there. It's not making any difference. Hmm, it's not doing anything. If I switch that off, it should stop, I assume. Oh, it still goes a little bit. It is changing it. I have my scope set up and it's monitoring the speaker. Uh, so it's saying, well, where are we here? I'll turn that right up. And it says 50, about 50 hertz. That's the maximum. We'll turn this tuner down. Oh, no, no, that's where it's shorting out. Goes down to, I don't know. 33 hertz, somewhere around 30. This isn't doing what I thought it was going to do. I expected a reasonably smooth oscillation. This is more motorboating than oscillating. At this stage, what I think I'll do is take everything off the board. I'll clean and check and make sure everything is intact, all the connections, the solders, and reassemble it. And with a bit of luck, maybe it'll do something different when it's all back together and I know that everything is correct. All it has is a dozen screws holding it all onto the board and apart from a couple of solder joints I think I can just take it all off as one piece. Thank you. 
I think everything is loose. There it is. Okay. That should come off. So the only thing on is that wire there that's going underneath. Okay. I'll take this out to my workshop and give it a clean up. And all the other parts as well. I may have to disconnect most of those to clean them up, I think. But anyway, let's go and do this base first. I was going to leave the label there. We'll see if we can get it off. Only, only tiny little tacks. So I can take that off without damaging the label. That'll be good. Yeah. This one's a bit harder to get out. No, there it goes. Okay. All right. So that gives me a clear path to, to repair this. All right, I've got the board out in the workshop. I've got some shellite on a rag. Um, I'll see what it does to the finish. It's taking the dirt off. Yes, it's not taking the finish off. So I think I can clean up with this. And a lot of dirt there, 80, 90 years worth. So I'll have a go at the top. It looks like it has got a stain in it. I was going to say it's um, walnut, but I, it looks like it's got a bit of red in it. that. Wow. And do the edges as well. This is as clean as it's ever going to be. I'm going to use some restore finish on it and it will help fill up some of the little marks and these are probably fairly recent marks I would think but you know there's some bare wood there. I don't want to start tinting it or anything like that so I'll try this. We'll see if that will cover it, or at least make it presentable. And that looks pretty good. I'll put another coat on once this dries, but it's covered up some of the lighter areas where it's been damaged. So that'll dull off, of course, as it dries. This has been drying overnight, and I'm going to put some Howard Feed and Wax on. This will protect the restorer finish and give it a nice semi-gloss. Now I've done this before, you just apply it and let it dry for about 20 minutes, rub off the excess, let it dry a bit longer than that and, uh, and buff it. And that's all it needs. That has a nice coat of the wax on it now. As I said, I've got to let it dry for about 20 minutes, buff it off and it'll dry flatter than that. It won't be as shiny as that when it's finished. So I'll just let that dry and we'll come back in a minute. This has been drying for three quarters of an hour. I went and had breakfast actually. So I'll just rub off any excess, um, you know, wax. And it, yeah, it's getting a bit off. And just let it sit for a bit longer and then give it a buff. But that's going to be fine. Yeah, look, that looks good. That'll do. I think I'll leave it at that. I'll give it a buff and that's it. This just needs cleaning up. A bit of soap or solvent will probably clean up most of it. I'll have to check this pot though. This capacitor I suspect is shorting in at least part of its range. I'll undo the wires from it and we'll have a look. I have the capacitor here. I've cleaned it and I've put a couple of little tab strips on the side there so I can connect my multimeter to it. I have the capacitor closed at the moment. If I look at the meter there, it's a dead short and this is where it was scratchy while I was testing it. It was coming through the speaker and I can feel it as I'm turning it. And if you look at the meter, there it goes. So it's now starting to not short. That's what we should have all the way. So there's a short there somewhere. I'll see if I can see it. They look all right. And that looks all right. And turn it over. No. Ah. That plate there and even that one there are a bit tight, a bit close to the to the stator. I'll put the multimeter lead back on. It slipped off when I turned it over. I'll just move this plate over and there it is. So it's that plate there. So if I bend that out a little bit there, do the one next to it, that looks better. Actually I can't feel it scraping anymore. Needs a little bit more I think. Okay, let's try that. 
I've taken it back to the start. We'll try it again. That looks better. All right. Yeah, I think that hits at the end there. Just pull it away a bit. I don't know. No, it's still got a short there somewhere. All right. Well, no, it's completely out. So it can't possibly have a short. Must be my finger. It is too. <laughs> right. All right. No shorts. That's done. I've cleaned all this up and the capacitor is sorted. So I'm going to mount it back on the board. I'll do it all off camera. And when it's done, we'll come back and, and give it another test for what it's worth. It's all reassembled. I tested the two potentiometers while I had it apart. I sprayed some deoxid in the switch. It did have a little bit of residual resistance in it. So that's now back to zero. I couldn't find anything wrong with it apart from the capacitor, but I don't think that was causing any issues. I have my battery eliminator here. I've connected to the 90 volts B plus this time. We'll try that. It'll do exactly the same, I'm sure. Yeah. There's the image on the scope. So for me, I've got no idea what it's used for and I've got no idea what's supposed to go in there where it says speaker. I don't think it had a, well, I don't know. I've connected my VTVM to the grid and there it is there. And what it changes. So that is negative. I've got it selected to negative. Yeah, so it's got negative voltage on the grid. I'll wrap this up now. I don't know what it was used for. I have no idea. Can't really read the circuit and make us make it work. I can see that it's supposed to oscillate, but that's about all. If you're watching and you know exactly what it was used for, please leave a comment. So thanks for Mustafa for the coffee and letting me have a go at this thing. I did enjoy doing it. It's probably a rather dull video, but anyway, thanks to Mustafa, his wife for the baklava. And thanks for watching. And I hope you enjoyed what we did. And I hope you can join me for my next radio adventure.